<sighs> good morning, good morning, good morning. It is June 8th. I believe it's Wednesday. <laughs> no, my God, it's Thursday. <laughs> I left home on Monday. Today is Thursday. So, <sighs> Yesterday, I got in Cairo at 1 a.m. I got to Luxor around 8 a.m. And boy, are my arms tired, literally from carrying bags and going from plane to plane and stowing and going, my arms are tired. So suggestion number one, check as many bags as possible and try to make it light. But I learned a huge lesson last year going on flights. And I should have put this in the other video, but the lesson is always make sure that you have one to two outfits in your carry-on because if they lose your luggage, boy, oh boy, you will be having an overnight delay without underwear, without clean clothes. So on a flight like I had, after going 4 p.m. to, let's see, 9 p.m. on a flight, three hours of layover, then taking another six hour flight, and then an eight hour layover, and then another six hour flight and a six hour layover. By then I was like, okay, I have to change my clothes now, okay? I had to change my clothes. I just took everything I owned inside the bathroom on one of those carts and I went found one of those handicapped bathrooms and I did that. Well, if you had a washcloth and soap, you could do, you know, a wash down, but, you know, baby wipes, freshen up deodorant, um, clean up underneath the tatas and down there and boom. I was almost a whole new person. So <laughs> that was great. Um, what I got to say about that? Yeah, so I was able to change clothes and then I had Ziploc bags with me. So I put my dirty clothes in a Ziploc bag and shove them down there and make sure you have socks with you. That's, that's a game changer. Always making sure you have on clean, dry socks and store your socks and underwear that are clean in a Ziploc bag so that you always have dry, clean socks and underwear. And for women, make sure you have your feminine hygiene things with you. So that was a total sidebar, completely different from what this video was supposed to be about, which is doing a great job on your layover. I had an eight hour layover in Paris. I didn't meet anybody on the flight that was going to Paris, but just by chance, trying to exit the airport, going through the customs procedures, showing your passport and checking in. I met a couple that was right in front of me and they were thinking, hey, we got an eight hour layover in Paris. Let's go see the Eiffel Tower. That was so cool. Not only were they going to where, you know, my final destination, they were also going to my midpoint destination with, was pa with Paris with the exact same idea as me. So now I was hanging out with a couple that spoke Arabic, they were Egyptian, and they were just the greatest couple. It was so funny, um, just a, a peep into their life. And they were very just, just welcoming and sweet. And they just suggested like, well, you should go with us. And I loved it, number one the idea of leaving the airport and ex I didn't even think about exchanging money, but while we were exiting the airport, his idea was, hey, let's go and exchange some money. That way we, um, we have cash on us in euros while we're in France, which is awesome. In the meantime though, he didn't like the exchange rate and he was like, no, we are not doing this. So instead of getting money at the airport, which was 100 US dollars for 75 euros. Um, our driver got us, you know, to a location where we spent nine, $100 for 90 euros. It was like a huge difference, a $15 difference 
Um, and he was fussy about it. And I swear those would that would be one of those things where I was like, oh, well, you know, because I wouldn't have took the chance of finding a bank outside. But huge lesson. And he was very firm. And I was just basically learning from him because he takes that trip all the time. Now, the next thing that he did, we uh, saw a cab driver. And the idea was that the cab driver was going to drive us rather than us taking the train. But we still at the French, you know, at the Charles de Gaulle airport, we would have stored our luggage, which would have been probably 25, 25 euros each. So that's 50 euros. Instead of storing our luggage and hitting a train, we used the 50 euros towards the ride. And so we got a ride directly to the Eiffel Tower with someone explaining things to us. We got like full view of the city. He drove around it. You know, he drove around the streets around it. I didn't get to go to the Louvre or to the um, Notre Dame, which even though it's four miles away, the traffic in a car, it was a 45 minute ride. Um, at first, I watched videos about going to the Eiffel Tower, but I didn't realize that it literally is an hour away. So it was nice just to have a car ride that was an hour away. The person took us right to a bank to get the exchange that we wanted. They took us directly to the Eiffel Tower, rode us around it, showed us some shops, cafes, waited on us. We didn't have to store our bags. Um, Yeah, we didn't have to store our bags. One thing that I learned from this gentleman uh, was that number one, before you get into someone's car, he took a picture of the license plate front and back and he let this guy know that we mean business, that if you are disappearing or get lost, maybe you might get arrested because there were supposed to be some strikes out in France that day. So if there was some danger and he was forced to move or leave, getting that person's number and the license plate, because you, you know, sometimes I rent a car and I can't even remember what the car was that I had until I click the button. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm driving a white car. So then you know the make model of the vehicle, you know the license plate number. I I really benefited from being around this gentleman yesterday, not just for that, but even to his firmness of letting the person know up front that you mean business. It was it was definitely something where sometimes we want to be nice, but definitely teaching you to stand up for yourself up front so that people don't play games with you. So you don't have to worry about getting swindled later on. Like, what if this guy drives off with our bags? So definitely he put his foot down up front. The guy was a little bit irritated, but I also felt this, that if he was really a negative person, um, a person who didn't mean us well, he would have left us alone at the fact that 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 the license plate number was being recorded. That's that's an actual deterrent. A person who really took that in a negative light would have actually been like, forget it, don't get in my cab. And I just really see how being firm up front the way that this gentleman was was a deterrent for anyone who would try to take advantage of us. So another thing that was the most amazing about this trip or this excursion was our drivers spoke Arabic, English, and French, but true clear understanding was made because I actually was hanging out with a couple that spoke Arabic. And me and his wife had a great time in the back seat, laughing and talking and, you know, exchanging information, talking about our kids and stuff like that. And then meanwhile, dad was up front and he was handling business and it was just really a comfortable trip. Also, while I'm in airports and in lines, you know, before we go on our trip, you clear the energy and you, you know, you ask for the connection with source that your guides take care of you. But then when I'm in the line around a lot of people, there's sometimes negative interactions going on or positive interactions going on, but it's a it's a, a flux of energy that doesn't belong to you. So I usually do, I stand there and I claim my energy for myself and any and I want to send out positive waves of energy, but not so that I am depleted. I take that energy from source and spread it out to those who need it. 
it was a situation at the Orlando airport. There was a little boy and he was just losing his cookies. I think he was getting on the plane with his dad and his sister. And I think mom was leaving, but I had just got to clear myself and grounded myself. And, and we, people were going in the little zigzag lines. And this little kid was in the line behind me. And I, try to live with the purpose of knowing that I'm exactly where I need to be at all time. And I know that I was needed in that situation. And I just, a lot of people will complain because I've had this happen to Tyler too, where somebody looks at your kid funny because they're crying and it's just normal. Kids lose their cookies when they're, when they're traveling, they're either hungry, thirsty, scared, confused. And usually it's something that they're trying to communicate that somebody's not understanding what they're trying to communicate. And that's when kids act out. So having that clear understanding, know that there's something that this kid needs, but then a parent is usually somewhat afraid, nervous, or stressed out. They don't always know how to respond. And in some cases you can help. And so what I did was I leaned over to him. I asked him, are you okay? But then the very next thing I did was ask him to take a deep breath. We need to breathe. And then he started breathing and I put my forehead to his head and I was just asking him to breathe and be calm. And he slowed down and everybody was like, oh, thank God this child is more quiet. But then I asked him what he was upset about and he was upset about his mom not being right next to him in the line. And I asked his dad, cause I don't want to lie. Is she coming? And he said, yes, she's over there. She has to go through a different line, blah, blah, blah. So I'm not sure if that's true or not, but I was letting him know, okay, so mommy's coming, right? You're afraid that mommy's not gonna make it? Okay, I don't recommend you lying to your kids if 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 you're trying to sneak out for a babysitter and stuff, stuff like that is not cool. But um, address their needs, but then, for my part in this situation, I just address what is your fear and assuaging his fear, letting him know that everything is going to be all right. Dad is here. And it was so funny because this little kid was big. I don't know how old he was. He might have been five, but like a little chunky five. And he was like, Dad, pick me up, pick me up. And I was like, oh, no, but dad needs your help. You got to employ kids sometimes to help you because when they're in the mode switched out of the mode of helping themselves like asking for help and switch them on to you asking them for help it employs them it triggers something in them because kids really do want to be helpful but every person usually you'll find that when you're in the selfish mode or self-service mode, you switch them off of that to helping others and they stop thinking about their problem and they focus on you. So now dad says, put me on your back. And now he's like, I was like, no, you got to hold him up. And so now it was just a whole different energy throughout the line. This kid was trying to carry his dad and he was just excited about being a big boy and being responsible. So that was a really cool opportunity. Um, so ground in your line, know who you are, protect your energy, you can still be in service to others, or you can choose to stay inside your bubble. There is no wrong answer, but the, the best thing is protecting your energy from the sources around you. And then when we got to the Eiffel Tower, I was going off a little to the side to take a picture and I looked down and I found my black and white feather. So everywhere I go, even Universal Studios, I'm finding my feather and my signal from my guys that you are doing the right thing. We're watching you, we're on your side, we're on your team, we're with you. So it was just really cool to see that feather there and have another sign saying, hey, you're protected and safe at all times. So this was just another tip for the airport and making your excursions the best. And I will talk to you later.